Now that we've defined the angular position and the angular displacement, let's look at the average angular velocity, which is going to represent, on average, how many radians the particle sweeps through per second. So it's going to be the same idea as the average velocity vector. It basically tells you how quickly you undergo a certain angular displacement. So let's illustrate this maybe by drawing a particle here, time t initial, and then let's say it's going counterclockwise like this. This is a time t final, and of course that means that the angular displacement is delta theta right here. And your average angular velocity is going to represent the ratio of your angular displacement to the time it takes to undergo that angular displacement. So uh, Greek letter omega average represents the average angular velocity, and that's delta theta over delta t, kind of shorthand, right? So it's really it's theta final minus theta initial. That's the definition of delta theta, and then delta t, of course, is t final minus t initial. One way or the other, it's how many radians you cover in a given amount of time, and that on average tells you how many radians per second you cover. So the units are radians per second, naturally, because the angle theta is in radians and time is measured in seconds. So it's kind of a natural quantity to define for this type of motion, and you can think of it as how fast the turntable is spinning if you think of this particle here as a maybe a sticker at the edge of a turntable going counterclockwise. So your average angular velocity um, serves the same function as the average angular velocity vector. It gives you, on average, how fast the little particle is spinning around the center. It's not perfect because it's an average, so we'll eventually have to define the instantaneous angular velocity, but for now, maybe let's just do an example and see what we um, get when we compute Let's say t initial is one second, t final is three seconds, and let's say, I mean, you could write it here or you could write it over there, so whatever. Theta initial, I guess we could call it here, is going to be, let's stick to pi over four, we've been doing that, and then theta final, although it's getting a little cramped here, there we go, three pi over four is going to be that angle, and here, if you wanted to compute omega average, you would say it's delta theta over delta t. So that's 3 pi over 4. Now, we've already computed this angular displacement, so we know it's pi over 2, but 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 divided by 3 minus 1, which is 2. So numerator is going to be pi over 2 divided by 2 again is going to be pi over 4 radians per second. And that, of course, makes sense because if you start out here and you have two seconds to go from here to here, then pi over 4 with the first second, pi over 4 with the second second, and overall you cover pi over 2 radians in two seconds. So on average, pi over 4 radians per second. So kind of easy to compute, pretty straightforward to understand what it represents, just kind of a different type of motion, but same idea overall. And of course, same limitations. It is an average quantity, so it's not perfect. It doesn't really tell us what happens between here and here. You don't know if you speed up and slow down or turn around and continue going. You have no idea. So we will define the instantaneous angular velocity in a bit. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't heard of Cogwars Academy before, we're a tutoring company that specializes in creating course companions that help you save time and improve your grades. You tell us which class you're taking, and we'll have a look at your syllabus, old exams, the style of your instructor, and put together a course companion, mapping over lecture notes, videos, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, even personalized study guides and access to a private chat for you to ask all your questions. If this sounds like something that might be helpful to you, Feel free to check us out at congressacademy.com.